I'm going to show you how to use the automatic citation generator MyBib. First, let's create an account. This isn't required, but if you want to save your citations, it's a good idea to create an account. You can create an account either entering your email and password, or you could link it to your Google account. So here's one of my projects. As you can see, because I created an account, one of my citations is still saved. Before we get started, make sure that you select the correct citation style. Remember, your citations are only as accurate as what you put in. You can select your citation style here. We want MLA 8, so ours is correct. It does have recommendations for some of the most popular citation styles, including APA and Chicago. If you don't see what you want there, you can type it in here. So we're going to keep it as MLA 8 because that's what we're using. All right, now we're ready to add a citation to our project. Click on the Create a Citation button. Now select the type of resource you are citing. The four most common ones are listed here. Website, book, journal, and video. If none of these fit, then select something in the More drop-down menu. In this case, we are citing an article on a website, so I'm going to select Website. You can either copy and paste the website link or enter the information manually. I recommend entering the information by hand the first few times until you are fairly confident that you can see citation mistakes on your own. So we are going to click on Enter Manually. First, we are going to enter the web page or article author. If you don't have an author, you can either use the organization responsible for the website or leave this part blank. The author of this article is Sarah Zhang. If you have more than one author, you can select Add Another. We only have one author, so let's move on. Now we are going to put in the date the article or web page was published. It was published in the year 2019, February 22nd. If your web page doesn't have a date, leave this blank. Be sure not to confuse the date of publication with the copyright date. The date of publication is the date that the web page or article was uploaded or last updated. The copyright date usually refers to the entire website and won't necessarily reflect when that website was last updated. Let's put in the title of this article. So the title of this article is Why We Think Cats are psychopaths. Be sure that your title is capitalized. Time for the name of the website. This is different than the title of the page or article. To find the name of the website, you can usually look at the top of the page. If it's not there, you can check the bottom or go to the front page of the website. The title of our website is The Atlantic. Sometimes, if a web page is part of a larger organization, you will have a publisher. Going back to the website's home page, or looking at the website's about page, will tell you if this is the case. This is also where that copyright date can come in handy, because sometimes it will tell you what company has copyrighted the website and you can use that. For example, I could use the Atlantic Monthly Group as my publisher. Now we are going to include the URL. For the date accessed, generally this part is optional, but if you're using a website that doesn't have a date or changes frequently, you should include the date of access. Also, do this if your instructor requires it. All right, we've put in our information, now it's time to hit save. If you've created an account, you can save your citation to a project. So how do I get this bibliography into my paper? Click on the Download Bibliography button a couple of different options come up. Choose the one that you want. I'm going to choose Google Drive, but Word or Copy are also good options. Now I'm going to open up my drive and open my BibMe citations. Look at this beautifully formatted work cited. Double spaced, hanging indents, alphabetized, no missing information. Easy for my professor to read and see what resources I've used. 